in this video we are going to discuss about acid base balance of which we will be discussing the role of the lungs as well as the kidney in acid base balance. So we know that basically there are three systems which work in order to maintain the H plus concentration. So the first one was the buffer systems in body fluids which we had done separately as a different video and in this class we will be discussing about the role of respiratory system as well as the renal system. So first we will quickly see the role of lungs in acid base balance that is respiratory regulation of acid base balance. So this is the second line of defense against an acid base disturbance. So basically when we respire or when there is an increase in ventilation what will happen the carbon dioxide will be blown out by the lungs. Now this will cause a decrease in the carbonic acid which in turn will cause a decrease in the H plus ion. Okay. So what will happen when there is an increase in ventilation there will be a wash out of carbon dioxide which in turn will cause a decrease in the H plus concentration which means it will go towards alkalosis. So this can be beautifully represented by this graph. The x-axis of which shows the rate of alveolar ventilation and the y-axis shows a pH change in the body fluids. So here you can see that as the alveolar ventilation increases, the pH also increases. That means it will be more towards the alkalosis side. Okay. Now the reverse is also true. See whenever there is a change in the arterial pH, what will happen? The lungs will regulate this rate of ventilation in such a way that the pH will return to normal. So see this is the graph which shows the x axis having the pH of arterial blood and y axis showing alveolar ventilation. So see if the pH moves on towards the acidic side what will happen to the ventilation? It will increase so that the pH can be brought back to normal. So basically the lungs will regulate the acid base balance mainly by regulating its rate of ventilation. So whenever there is an increase in uh, the pH level, there will be an increase in alveolar ventilation. And when there is an increase in alveolar ventilation, there will be a decrease in partial pressure of carbon dioxide, which in turn will bring the pH to normal. So I am not lingering more on the respiratory regulation because in general there is not mu much asked for the exams in my exam point of view. So quickly we will move on to the third type of regulation which is very very important as far as an exam is concerned. That is renal system. What is the role of kidneys in acid base balance. So the main role of kidneys in acid base balance is via three mechanisms. The first mechanism is secretion of H plus. That means if uh, there is a regular secretion of H plus in the urine. Second mechanism is reabsorption of filtered bicarbonate and the third mechanism is production of new bicarbonate. So we will see each one by one. So first one is first mechanism is secretion of H plus. See nearly 80 milliequivalents of H plus is being secreted daily in the urine. Okay. So from where does this all H plus come from? See from this part of the nephron that is from the proximal convoluted tubule, the thin, uh, thin, uh, thin descending limb and a thick ascending limb up to the distal convoluted tubule, the secretion of, takes, secretion of H plus takes place by the secondary active transport while it is different in the late tubular part. So first we will see how the H plus is secreted in this first part of the nephron. Okay. So the dissolved carbon dioxide inside the cell will combine with water to form H2CO3 which is carbonic acid which then dissociates to form bicarbonate and H plus. Right? Now this H plus will be secreted out into the lumen by this pump and this is called the sodium hydrogen counter transport. See it's when sodium gets in hydrogen goes out. So this is called the sodium hydrogen counter transport and this in turn pumps out this H plus into the lumen. Right? Now what happens to the bicarbonate? Bicarbonate will be reabsorbed by the sodium bicarbonate co-transport. So here we have got sodium bicarbonate co-transport to reabsorb this bicarbonate. And all this is by the help of the sodium potassium ATPase pump which provides the energy. So remember in the early part of the nephron the secretion of H plus occurs by a secondary active transport. Now we will see what is the mechanism in the later part of the tubule. In the later part of the tubule this H plus is secreted by another pump which is called H plus ATPase that is hydrogen ATPase. Okay? So that is why I said here it is primary active transport here because this is the active pump. 
So, in the later part of the nephron, the H plus is secreted by means of hydrogen ATPase, and to reabsorb bicarbonate, we've got another channel here, and this is called the chloride bicarbonate exchanger. Chloride bicarbonate exchanger. So, the mechanism is different in both parts of the nephron, right? So, that was the first step, that is secretion of H plus. So, the second mecha mechanism is reabsorption of the filtered bicarbonate. So, we know that in the proximal conveyor tubule, the bicarbonate is freely filtered. But this filtered bicarbonate has to be reabsorbed. But for this reabsorption, the bicarbonate cannot easily tra be transported back into the tubular cell. So, what does it do? It will combine with our H+. Remember, we had said that H+, is secreted. It will combine with this secreted H+, to form carbonic acid, that is H2CO3. Now, this will further dissociate to form H2O and CO2, which can easily be diff which can easily diffuse back into the tubular cell. Now, so this is how bic this bicarbonate can be reabsorbed back. And here, remember, here this carbon dioxide and water will again form bicarbonate. And this bicarbonate is taken back by means of this sodium uh, bicarbonate co-transport. So, for each H plus that is secreted, one bicarbonate is being reabsorbed, either through our sodium bicarbonate co-transport or by, the, by our chloride bicarbonate exchanger, right? So, for each H plus that is secreted, one bicarbonate is being reabsorbed. But what will happen when there is excess production of H plus? See, when there is excess of H plus in the ECF, the kidneys not only reabsorb all the filtered bicarbonate, but also generate new bicarbonate. Okay, so we will see how that happens. So the third mechanism is production of new bicarbonate. So this production of new bicarbonate is accomplished by our kidneys by combining with other buffers. So one such buffer is a phosphate buffer. So, the phosphate buffer system mainly consists of HPO4- and H2PO4. So, see here, you can see that this is the HPO4-. Now, whenever there is a, if bicarbonate is present, all the H+, will combine with the bicarbonate. But, if there are excess of H+, that excess of H+, will combine with this NHPO4- to form NHPO4-. Now, this can be excreted out. Okay? So, see, when this combination of H plus is done by NaHPO4 minus E. There is an extra bicarbonate which is being reabsorbed. So, this is how there is new bicarbonate production by the kidneys. And this H plus, that is the amount of H plus that can be titrated by buffers is called titrable acid. So, this is an important um, term that you can use in your answer. That is the excess amount of that H plus which is neutralized or which is which combines with this HPO4- or other buffers it is called titrable acid. So another buffer that helps in the production of new bicarbonate is ammonium buffer. Ammonium buffer mainly consists of ammonia and ammonium ion. So how is ammonium ion produced? See in the proximal converged tubule ammonium ion is produced from glutamate. See glutamine through a series of reactions will form two molecules of ammonia and two molecules of bicarbonate. And this ammonium ion is further secreted by the help of this pump which is called the sodium ammonium countertransport. And the bicarbonate that is formed is reabsorbed into the interstitial fluid by means of the sodium bicarbonate co-transporter. So see new bicarbonate is formed in the kidney, right? Now in the collecting through a different mechanism. So, we know that ammonia is a freely diffusible substance and it is called non-ionic diffusion. Now, this ammonia will combine with H+. See, remember, we had said that in the collecting tubules, we have got H+, ATPase, which will pump out blood. So, this ammonia will combine with this H+, to form the ammonia, ammonium ion. See, once it forms this ammonium ion, it cannot go back to the tubular cell. So, that is why this process is called diffusion trapping. Right. So, earlier the ammonia was freely diffusible, but then once it combined with H plus to form NH4 plus or the ammonium ion, it is trapped and that is why it is called the diffusion trapping. And see here the bicarbonate that is formed is reabsorbed. So, here again we get a new bicarbonate. Right. So, to summarize, when a question like acid-base balance is asked, we first have to write about the importance of acid-base balance and then move on to write the three main important systems. So, the first line of defense is a buffer system in the body fluids. The second line is a respiratory system and the third line is a renal system. 
In the buffer system, we, had, uh, we have to mention about the bicarbonate buffer system, the phosphate buffer system, the, the protein buffer system, three of which I have mentioned in detail in a previous video. Then in the respiratory system, we have seen about the how the rate of ventilation changes the pH. And for the exam, you can also draw graphs to make uh, that concept more clear. And in the renal system, we have seen about the secretion of H+, reabsorption of filtered bicarbonate and production of new bicarbonate. And we have also seen the molecular mechanisms. So I hope this concept is clear and you know what to write when such a question is asked for the exam. Thank you.